Okay, so as you can see, I am home. I am in my loft upstairs, which is under construction. My life's under construction, so it works out pretty well for me. If you're not already following my Twitter or Facebook feed, this may actually be news to you that I'm home. Uh, I was not able to stay and have a fantastic, wonderful weekend in Chapel Hill because they weren't even going to the parts until Tuesday, and uh, I would also have gone even more broke than I already am because they are quite expensive. Now, anyone that's ever dealt with an actual dealership and actually if you've ever had a car repaired, everybody knows these people can be mighty sneaky. And um, I was kind of worried when I saw the bill. It seemed ridiculously excessive to me. And then a couple of concerned uh, viewers and friends and friends of friends who get the feed, the repeat feed, chimed in and said that the, the $2,200 price tag that I was being quoted seemed a little bit high to them. So uh, I tried to jump on the phones right into action and get some quotes and get that fixed. Fortunately, on Saturday, none of the dealerships and none of the mom and pops are open. So I could not get any conflicting quotes, I could not get any information. All I could do was look it up online. And when I did that, I found that the piece that I wanted I could not find for more than $100, and it was being billed at $829, so I didn't like that, that really scared me. Um, anyway, so I uh, passed the weekend, and then Monday morning, before heading out of town on a day trip, I made a bunch more calls to a bunch of these different people, and... Uh, I found out some interesting things. One is that in the itemized estimate that I was getting, they were including labor with the parts. So it wasn't that the part was $825. The part was actually $325, and that's what the other people said as well. And then the labor was $500 and $600, $600 um, for that particular part. And then the next piece was another part and more labor. So the clutch assembly, which I thought was the labor for the whole thing, was actually getting a new clutch assembly. Apparently, when the slave cylinder explodes, it gets goo all over the inside of the clutch assembly and it needs to be replaced. And apparently also, uh, every 120,000 miles, you need a new clutch assembly unless you want your clutch to get sticky and not so good. And the car is 110. So sometime this year, I was gonna have to buy a new clutch assembly. So I guess uh, that was not as bad. Just two catastrophes with one bill. Uh, which, when you're a student, isn't as big a deal as when you're a working person because I get all that money in a giant chunk. People are like, here, have $10,000 in student loans. But then I don't get anything else for like seven months. I'm just watching my money go down, paying the expensive, you know, $3,000 tuition bills and such, and food and trips, and my car explodes. And uh, so, you know, but nevertheless, it still seemed suspicious and it still seemed high, so they told me they'd give me an estimate and they worked on it and they worked on it and they called me back and they were willing to do the same job for eighteen fifty, which is four hundred dollars less. That's like twenty percent less. I mean, dealerships are always shady. And this is a lot better than I thought, because I've been thinking that everyone was telling me this should be a thousand dollars and it was two thousand, and I'm like, how who are you that you can just bill me double? Like you look at the land, you're like, eh, it should be a thousand dollars. I'll tell him too, see what he says. <laughs> It'll be fun. But it turns out, apparently, 18-ish is actually pretty legitimate. So they only tacked up $400, and, and so, like, I don't know, I guess you could see that. They probably just used everything in its initial. They didn't try and knock anything down, didn't go to bat for me at all, didn't try and bring it down at all, you know. Um, but, I mean, they're salespeople. Their job is to pretend they're going to bat for you, while, in fact, they're trying to make you pay the most possible price, which, that's, that's how they make money. So, I called the dealership back. And of course, no answer. So I have to leave a number and a message, and he calls me back. He says, hey, how you doing? I said, well, I'm doing pretty good, but I've been calling around, and I can find some of the dealerships in this mom and pop place nearby. I'll do it for eighteen fifty. And my contact name is Tim. And Tim thinks about this for a minute, and he goes, "Well, I imagine they're probably using some knockoff parts from, uh, you know, like a Jiffy Lube type place, a Jiffy Lube brand, and." Uh, we could do that and bring the price down about three hundred dollars. The downside is that if, if we're not using our parts, we can't warranty the labor. Because I mean, you know, no typically part we could break, and then we'd be out. So no, we can't warranty the labor if we do that. But we can save you three hundred dollars. That'd be great. Um, if you want, I'm sitting there thinking. I swear they said they were going to give me original parts, and and everyone always, you know, 
warranties they work. So I'm thinking, even if they're not giving me retail parts, at least they're going to give me a warranty. So I tell them, like, I call them back, and I have to call back to the place and bother them again. I'm really apologetic, because I'm probably not going to go with them. They're just really helping me out. And I ask them, and sure enough, they're going to give me original parts from the GM manufacturer, and they're going to give me a 12-month, 12 12,000-mile 12, warranty. So he's offering me a, the warranty only on the parts, which that $1,500 of the $2,200 he wants to charge me is the labor. So if he gives me it for eighteen fifty, and then if I get it broken, I have to come back and pay fifteen hundred again. That's not a that's not a warranty. It doesn't what three hundred fifty dollars. That doesn't do anything. I'm not warranting anything. So um, no, I can't do that. So I call him back, and uh, I tell him, look, they're giving me twelve thousand twelve hundred mile warranty. They're giving me GM original parts. They're giving it to me for eighteen fifty. So match it, or I'm telling. Thinks about that for a minute. Tim says, "All right, Michael." Let me see what I can do. I'll call you back. And hangs up. And here, you know, he's like playing my friend again. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see what I can do. I'm going to see if I can hit that number for you. I'm going to see what I can get that. And I know the reason he hung up. He hung up because he can't just say, not a problem. We'll just do 1850. Because then it just sounds like he's been lying to me through his teeth the whole time. And he always could have done 1850. And he could probably even do less. Like, if I found a better dealership, would have done it for 1600 And if I could have moved my car... It would have been way less. But even though the dealership was only giving me a really rough and a high estimate because they didn't, I can't, you know, I had to tow it to them for them to see it. So I probably could have gotten a little lower if the car was mobile, but it wasn't. So I uh, had to deal with that. But he's, you know, he's playing the guy's guy. He's playing he's going to go to bat, pretending he's going to do something for me, check out some numbers, crunch some stuff, and see if he can get it to me. So I can understand that. You, just, you, know, you don't want to just tell me you were just lying in my face. So half an hour goes by. And an hour goes by, and then two hours go by, and I'm starting to wonder what he's even pretending to do at this point. Like, what could he do to help me out that took him two hours? I mean, he went on his he must have gone on his lunch break. I mean, he went. I called him at nine. I got to an answer at one. I mean, at some point he went on lunch break. So <laughs> it doesn't even like seem like you're bad for me anymore. You're going on lunch break. You're not calling me back. I don't know what you're pretending to do, but it's really not helping me out any. So finally, about 1.20, four hours later, he calls me back, incredibly serious. Michael, we can do that for you. 18.50 with the warranty. 12,000 miles, 12 months, whichever comes first. I say thank you, order the parts, do it, c'est la vie, I am done. So that is the complete conclusion, and never trust car dealerships, they are sneaky. And always call multiple dealerships and compare and... You know, use them against their, I don't even think you need to call multiple dealerships. I think you could just call them and they're like, so this other person promised me 1600 for everything I need done. What are you, what are you, what are you going to do? Probably give it to you. Probably what insurance companies do. Well, anyway, that is it. No, oh, I lied. That is not it. Well, I forgot. But we are actually going to name the car after all the drama that it has put me through. It's going to have some kind of awesome name. We're going to keep it for the rest of our lives. It's going to be our spunky little yellow car. And uh, for that, we are going to allow people to give us their suggestions, comments, and try and pick from one of those, unless all of them are horrible, uh, as the name for the new car. So uh, go ahead and comment in the margin below. Use a Twitter, Facebook, or leave a video response. Any of these things are fantastic. And uh, at the end of all this, during the conclusion, I will announce the new name of my little yellow car.